Welcome back to another episode of Northwoods Whitetails Podcast. I'm your host, Joey Davis, joined by Isaac Young. On today's podcast, we are down to hunt stock, and um, you're going to hear uh, Travis Williams, Brent Dragon, and guest Garrett Henderson uh, for a quick 30-minute segment, and then we're going to dive right into another one with Connor Schlong, Nate Sandville, and Johnny Hood. We're going to dive right in. Here we go. We're here at Huntstock today, sitting down with Garrett Henderson. Yes, sir. Garrett, uh, you've shot some good bucks, huh? Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to take a few. That's nice. Yep. Um, well, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself, and then uh, maybe we'll dive into one of those big bucks you've killed. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, my name's Garrett Henderson. Um, I currently live in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, just getting ready to move to a, another place in Sheffield, so that'll be good. Um, I am a self-employed contractor, building contractor. Um, and just, you know, the last four or five years, I've really had some time to deer hunt and that's what it takes right I mean, oh absolutely we all, time we all need time <laughs> to do it so i've just i've been fortunate enough to have the time to do it and have some good buddies to do it with two very important pieces of the puzzle right there absolutely yep yep so yeah i uh you know we're friends on facebook and yep. i think this is actually the first time we physically met but yes i definitely have seen some of the big ones you shot up what was that this year you shot that big one that yeah it was this year in new hampshire muzzle order November 7. Well, let's hear, let's hear about that one. Um, okay. Um, November 7, I shot the buck just after 7 a.m. Um, Luke picked me up at the house. It was before daylight. You know, we had a 45-minute hour ride to where we were going. Um, I remember, he, you know, he picked me up probably 5.30. It was 65 degrees, warm. And I remember that the night before, I had a conversation with my father on the phone. He said, boy... Man, it's been hot. I don't know if I'm going to hunt. I said, Dad, I said, you got to. I said, it's it's time. You know, time to, I don't care if it's 80 degrees. I, You just never know. We got to go. Um, so me and Luke head over. Uh, get to where we're going. It was just cracking daylight. You know, we had a little over a, about a mile walk in, I guess. Um, and we get to the power line. Of course, like I told you before, it was Luke's spot. Luke, Luke had had three years of pictures of this buck. Um, so we get to the power line. I asked Luke, I said, okay, which way do you want to go? And we hemmed and hawed for a minute. He says, well, I'll go south. I said, all right, I'll go north. So we, before we parted ways, I told him, I said, you know, we can just sit on the, sit on the power line, watch some of these deer crossings. I said, when you get sick of standing around, I said, come grab me. I said, we can do our normal loop around the mountain, whatever, whatever you want to do. So all right. So we parted. Um, I maybe walked a quarter mile up the power line, stood on a high spot. Um, I could see way further than I could ever shoot with even a rifle, you know. Um, so the first hour of daylight, I watched birds fly back and forth across the power line, watched sunrise. It was hot already. I said, man, this, this, is, an ide- this is an ideal weather, you know, and I was, I was second guessing myself. So what, are, what are we doing? It's hot. Um, so just before 7 o'clock, I looked down on my watch, and I said, boy, I wonder, I wonder when Luke will be up through. So I, I kind of started paying attention behind me. You know how roads are on power lines. They wind and they dip. Mm. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So I, I turned around, looked over my shoulder a few times pretty quick, and I could see his bright orange ball cap coming up the right way, but he was way down. And I said, oh, well, he's on his way up. He's sick. He's coming to get me. So maybe five minutes goes by, and I, I look again, and Luke's maybe 100 yards behind me coming up too. And the last time I looked at him, I, I turned back around and looked north on the power line and I watched the deer out on the power line. And it was, it was five and a half poles north of me. Oh, wow. So wow. it was, if I had to guess, 700 you know, set yeah. around 700 yeah. yards. Yeah, because what are those, Brent? Do you know? I, I don't know. it got to be 100, 125 yards I think there's, yeah. there is. There's like a formula. Yeah. There, there's a, a right. rhyme to it. It's yeah. not like they're just random. I want to yeah. say they're 100 or 150 yeah. yards right. apart. Yeah. 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 So he 
he hops out on the power line. I turn around, I look at Luke, and I give him the, the stop sign because I'm watching this buck, and he's out, and he's got his head down on the power line, you know, sniffing around. And I said, boy, so I, now I'm, in my head, I'm, I said, what, what am I going to do? I said, this, you know, this, this deer is huge. And I, I thought to myself, I, I got to get up there. I got to go. Um, so the deer got into a water bar, and I hit the tree line, and I sprinted for five poles, and I mean sprint. And, you know, the wind was blowing hard at me. I weren't worried about the buck smelling me. I was just worried about the buck seeing me. And I, so I got tree line, and I got up there, and I'm counting poles as I'm flying by them, and I get to the fifth pole, and I, I say, all right, take a breather. That was, that was smart of you, though, to have the presence yeah. of mind, yeah. to see a buck of that caliber, and then count the poles and yeah. know. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're like, yeah. it's so hard to judge right. distance. Especially yeah. 700 yards. Right. It, yeah. it was, it's a long that's way. A, that's you know, a pole. And, and may, it might not have been quite seven, but it was a long way, yeah. you know. And um, so I get to the fifth pole, and I'm like, "All right, you got to take a breather. If you if you got to make a shot here, of course, it's muzzle order, right? You got one." Um, so I try to get myself calmed down. I said, "All right, this deer still." And where I had stopped, the power line started started uphill, you know, and fairly steep. And there was a big spruce tree that had kind of grown out in the power line a little bit. There was a couple of big boulders and a couple of smaller boulders. And I said, "All right, if I can." If I can get over to one of those smaller boulders, I'll have something to rest on. And if the deer's still on this bank here, we'll be good. So I start creeping around the spruce tree, and I get in behind the first big boulder. And I'm just going to walk from out behind it. And I look up the bank, and here's the buck, 70 yards, standing in a water bar. And this is what I got, is his head. Mm. So I fall back into the rock, and I take the, take the safety off of the woodman. And I said, boy, I said, this ain't much of a shot. I said, that's said, what I got, right? And you got a million things going through your head. What do I do? You know, the buck takes one bound. He's, you know, he's only 10 feet from the tree line. You know, one bound, he's gone out of my life forever, you know? So I'm thinking in my head, I said, well, I can wait and see what happens. And then the other half of me says, well, you know what? I said, I know I can hit a softball at 70 yards. And that's what we're going to do because I'm not, this is, a, I gotta, you got your chance. I got my chance yeah. and I'm going to make the most of it, right? Yeah, got to try. So I, I lean back into the stone and, uh, and I'm just talking to myself in my head. I said, buddy, I said, it's the only shot you're going to get and you better squeeze it good. And I mean, squeeze it and squeeze mm. it. And I just kept telling myself that in the head, squeeze it, squeeze it. Gun breaks, smack. And I look up there, there's nothing. Of course, and I, I'm, I didn't know it at the time, but Luke, Luke had walked up to the telephone pole where I was standing and was watching all this unfold, you know, like. I was, I was just gonna, I was just going to ask you that because I'm thinking, wait a minute, Luke's, you know, 100 yards from you when you see him. Right. You take off running. He's, did he, see the, did he well, see the buck? He didn't. I When I turned around and told him to put the brakes on, I, I, I gave him this sign. Oh, so gotcha. I think he had a pretty good idea that what was going on, you yeah. know. So, um, now, now, could he see the buck when you were shooting it? I, Absolutely. Yep. Oh, he could. He that could. Is... So he he watched me run up the tr up the tree line, and he was watching the buck make his way down. And he's like in his head screaming, "Garrett, stop! The buck's coming! Garrett, stop! The buck is going!" And he's dude, we're just on a crash course for each other, and he's just sitting back. He's like, "You know, oh man, it's either going to happen much or it's not. Do. Not much he could do, right?" Um, so yeah, he from where he was, he he watched the he watched the muzzle loader go off and the deer go down in the same motion, and that was it. You know? he, and, what a what a um, he knew the deer had dropped before you did then. Absolutely. Yeah. He saw it. He, he could see it. watched the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. How cool, cool is that? Um, so I get up to the buck, and I'm looking him over, and I had to go to the tree line because I was dry heaving, and <laughs> and I think it was a combination of, a, you know, sprinting a quarter mile. and <laughs> I was going to ask about that. And, yeah, you know, it, yeah. excitement, and, um, you know, Luke, Luke gets up there. He says, uh, hey, hey that, that's a nice one. I said, yeah, I, I guess he's a nice one, and I just – it, was, it didn't even seem real, you know. I've hunted for you know deer hunting since I was nine years old. You know, I'm, I'm going to be 44, and I I I'd never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was just it was incredible, incredible feeling. It yeah. was actually I was almost I was almost sick to my stomach the entire day. Yeah. You know, I mean excited, but but yeah. nauseous. You know, I just you know, and it was just. But that's why we do it, though. Oh yes. That's, yeah, you know, I, I, I was just going <laughs> to say that you know for for someone like myself who's never shot a buck like that, I don't know if I've ever seen one like that you know, while hunting and those hunts, this account that you just gave and the, and, right. the, and the animal or what 
you know that's what the dreams are made of oh, when, abso- you, when you when you when you slip those lacrosse boots on in the morning and you're headed yeah. you know you shut yeah. that truck door those are the visions i'm yeah. thinking of garrett's yeah. Bach, you know yeah. like, and and it's you know they're out there and you yep, and you, you have an opportunity to bump into one and, yep. and that's what keeps us going yeah and i just you know i want to reiterate you know there's not there's not many guys like luke that would have would have even invited anybody yeah. to you know to mm-hmm. share something like and that. luke's last name yeah luke keithan yeah luke, luke keithan he's a he's a hell of a good guy you know i got i got a handful of guys that i hunt with but there's He's about the only one I share anything with. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. Well, you need that too because, you know, for me, and I'm sure you guys will relate, you know, part of hunting is the camaraderie. Mm. It's that connection with other hunters, family. Right. You know, for me, it's a tradition, like going to hunt and camp. And, yes. And without other people to enjoy it and share it with, you know, it's just not, it's not as fun. Yeah, you know? you're right. So, Having right. your buddy there, yep, and and having an animal like that, yeah. that having that's, somebody there to share it with, it that's made what it's it, all about. Made it that much sweeter, yeah. yeah. Especially someone that's been watching this deer for three years, right? You know, that's right. I, that's you know? uh, that's yeah, a, it, 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 it had a, to be uh, yeah. exciting for him you know, also. It was it was a true testament to his character because uh, I I know some guys that I hunted with that probably would have never talked to me again, yeah, <laughs> over something like that. Yeah. you know, um, what uh, what did he score? Uh, he grossed 162 and seven eighths and uh, netted 156. Wow. Yeah. How was the drag? Uh, the drag wasn't bad. Again, I had a good buddy that made the trek back to the truck to get the jet sled. Um, so it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Yeah. You know, it it might might have taken an hour. What do you weigh? Uh, 182. Emptied nice. right, empty nice. right out. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and to see the, the look on my boy's face when I pulled in the driveway with that was. That was that was what it's all about, right there. Oh yeah, I've seen yeah. those pictures with your son. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. He, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna be a hunter. There's he, no question. He's, he's got the bug already. You yeah. know, he he uh, <clears throat> killed four toms this spring, turkey hunting, and he's just he's hooked. That's mm-hmm. awesome. That's all he wants to talk about. You know, when I I go put him in bed at night, it's YouTube. He's watching, you know, either Northwoods Whitetail or the Joss Hunt Club. He's, he's watching all these guys. You know, yeah. and I. I I really would have liked to bring him down today. Him and his mother were busy, but um, sometime I'll get him down here. Yeah, I took my wife's down here. I have a three and a half year old. Yep. And so, just something to keep in mind for next year. Great yeah. Wolf Lodge is just nice. a couple clicks. Nice. So they're at Great Wolf Lodge. Yep. Adelina, my daughter, and my wife are having a blast, and yep. And I'm here doing hunt stuff. So, so we're in the we're in the middle of a move. So my, oh. you know, Crystal was gracious enough to be standing baseboard trim while I'm down here playing. So <laughs> yeah. she's a. She's a keeper. For sure. I, I thank my wife in every single one of my videos when I'm, you know, lucky enough to yes. get a deer. It's yeah. without our wives mm. or our significant others oh, supporting man. us and letting us do the thing that we are so passionate about. Right. Then, right. And, and my wife truly is excited every time I come through the door yep. with either a story or a buck, whatever right. it be. Yeah. And she's there to pick me up when I'm down because, yep. you know, if you're a tracker, there's, you know, or just a big woods hunter in general. Right. You get... You get those bad days. You just kind of get in a bad rut, and oh yeah, you know sometimes they come home and she's like, "Babe, you're gonna get one," you know. Yeah. And it's not even necessarily about getting one. It's just about like, for me, the conditions. Right. It's like I get frustrated when it's crunchy, bare right. ground. It's been 75 degrees every day. I tell her sometimes I feel like it's Groundhog Day. But to <laughs> right. your point, you gotta go. You have to go. Yeah. You gotta you go. You have to go. You know, I, uh, the year before that, November seventh, same day, November seventh, me and Luke, we we killed a nice nine pointer. You know, in, in the same general area, it was it was fairly warm that day too. One o'clock in the afternoon, um, we just sat sat down at the top of the ridge to eat a eat a sandwich. Uh, we were just shooting the breeze and talking about all the troubles of the world, you know. And I I thought I'd see uh, Luke's eyes light up. I heard I heard a deer running, and I see him perk up. I said, Yeah, that's a deer. And it was, he was running a doe around top of the hill. So we we both stood up and. Um, there was one small spot through the softwood trees that we could see. It, it might have been, again, 50, 60, maybe 70 yards. And I held the gun up there for what seemed like forever. You know, and I could hear the foot, hear him coming, hear him coming. And they, they were running around and around and around. And I just relaxed out of the gun for a second. And uh, the doe goes screaming through the hole. And I got the gun shouldered again. And I had just enough time to see the buck run through. And I touched the trigger. And he was gone. And I said, well, I said, I turned around, Luke, I said, there ain't no way in hell I hit that deer. And he says, oh, yeah, you, you hit him. He says, I, I watched him mule kick when you shot. I said, Luke, 
I said, that, that buck was cooking. I said, no way. I said, yeah, you, you hit him. So we, we take a walk over. And the immediate area where I shot, of course, a lot of times with a muzzleloader, they don't, they don't bleed real good right off. And we're looking around. There was no blood. Now, I told you, Luke, we'd, I wasn't real confident in the shot. He's like, I'm telling you, Garrett, the buck mule kicked when you shot. You hit him. So we walked down the trail probably, you know, 30 yards from where, where I had shot. And here comes the blood. And I said, <laughs> oh, you were right. Because we did. I guess we did, right? So we... We got going on him a little bit, and the buck jumped up, kind of tumbled down over the bank. Said no, and he he hadn't gone 100 yards and laid right down. I said I knew he was hurt, so I said, well, let's just sit here on this log and you know finish eating our lunch and give it an hour or two, and we'll go get him. And we did. We gave it about an hour, and we went down. He was he was stone dead. So long hour. It was a long hour, yeah. <laughs> and that was a long drag too. Uh, that that one took longer than an hour. I think that one took us seven and a half, almost eight hours to get out of the woods. Oh, wow. Um, Those are it, the fun ones, though. And it was, yeah, it was hot. It was warm. <laughs> uh, you know, they had, we had to go through a bad, you know, bad blowdown mess, and it was just, but it was, it's all worth it. That's, oh, yeah. that's my favorite yeah. part is dragging them out. Sounds yeah. like you got to hunt with your buddy a little bit more. <laughs> I, yeah, I do. He's watched you shoot two deer two, two years in a row, but it sounds <laughs> Yeah, he does. And like I said, I, he just, He's a hell of a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to. I want everybody to know that. For sure. So you killed a 160 inch last year. What's your heaviest buck you've ever shot? Um, 239.6, and I shot that deer in Vermont. Um, 2010, uh, November 17th. Um, we did not have any snow. Um, that deer came out with a with a doe that I was watching in a cut. Um, Again, I, I think I watched the deer for half an hour, in and out of the cedars with the doe, back and forth, back and forth. And I just, he never stood still long enough for me to get a good shot. And uh, I said, no, just be patient. Just, you know, I'm just trying, trying to tell myself be patient. And uh, so I watched him in and out of the cedars with his doe, back and forth, back and forth. And it was a couple times I was, I was pretty close to squeezing the trigger, but I just, something, something told me not to. And I said, no, just, just wait him out. And that, you know, that's one thing I've learned over the years is, you know, if I if I'd have been a little more patient from the start, I think patience kills more deer than than a lot. You know, um, so I told myself be patient. Um, eventually, they started you know squirming their way up the edge of that cut. Um, the doe went down to an old brook bed, probably 40 yards in front of me, and she crested the hill and walked by me at 25 yards. And when when he come up out of that brook bed at 30 yards, I let him have it. That was it. That's awesome. Wow. What do you have for horns? Um, um, he was just your basic 100-inch eight-pointer. Yeah. You know, um, but he was he was big, long, thick. Um, actually, another friend of mine. It was it was close to another friend of mine's house. He had, he had seen the deer quite a bit that earlier that fall under some apple trees by his place. So he he knew there was pretty good luck around. Just right place, right time. I mean, that's a giant for Vermont. I mean, mm. giant anywhere. Oh God. Yep. But for Vermont, that's yep. yeah, that's a real yeah. big one. Is it was it northern Vermont or? Oh, yep, northern yep. Vermont. Yeah. Yep, Sutton. Yep. Nice. Wow. Not not far. I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the wind project, the Sheffield Wind Tower. Oh, yeah, sure. So it'd be, you know, the east side of the Sheffield. Yeah. A mile or two. Yeah. It's not, not super far. Yeah. Yeah, so you got both ends of the spectrum there with a big almost 240 and then 160 mm -hmm. inches. Yeah. 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 So what are you going to shoot this year? Um, well, honestly, my biggest goal is to shoot a Pope and Young Deer in New Hampshire with my bow. Yeah. That's... That's what I want to do. That's, I mean, obviously any good buck that comes along, I, I'll probably take him. But yeah. my, my biggest goal is to shoot a Pope and Young deer with my bow. Yep. Have you shot many uh, deer over there with a bow? or? I have not. No? No. And I just, I haven't had the time to dedicate to it. You know, you know, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to take all of November and portion of December off. So, you know, September, October, I'm usually right at it trying to, Trying to save some money to not work for a month and a half. Yeah, finish yeah. up the jobs for the year. And yep. Yep. For sure. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people, you know, like, you know, when you do these things, when you do Northwoods Whitetails podcast and you yep. have a YouTube channel, people, I feel like, you know, they're like, how do you guys do it? Well, one thing I want everybody that's listening to understand is that if you're hunting only on weekends and you shoot a deer, you're doing a very, very good job. Absolutely. And... 
remember, it's not about the size of the animal. It's about the hunt. I know we yep. talk about the big ones on here, right? right? Because everybody wants to shoot a big deer, yep. myself included. Right. But I think it's very important for the listeners to understand yes. that if you're out there and you're having fun, yeah. and as Joey always says, if it makes your heart beat, mm-hmm. that's what it's all about. Right. right. And, and you know, the Garrett Hendersons of the world dedicate their time. They, they alter their life schedule to take a month and a half off to hunt. Yep. Yeah. And that's yeah. what it takes. Yes. That's what it takes. That and, and a whole yeah. lot of luck. And to still get excited after the deer, after you shoot the deer. Oh yeah. Yep. You know yeah, that yeah, that means something right there. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. excited is an understatement. Yeah. It really is. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, and I love hearing that. I love yeah. hearing the. You know, uh, we were talking to Eric Bowick earlier from the ADK Cowboys, and he yeah. was telling a story about his son shooting a nice buck and the emotion. Right. And, you know, for the people that watch this stuff that aren't in it. It's that emotion and that connection that you have with the, the people right. that you're with. Yep. Like the bond that you and Luke have now, oh, I yeah. mean, mm-hmm. you, yeah. you're never going to beat that. Right. Nope. Um, nope. Never and I just, uh, my grandfather passed away in 2018, um, and he didn't shoot many deer. You know, he shot a few, and he shot a couple real nice ones, but not many. Um, and I actually, I have a, one of the 11 point rack that he shot in 1955. And I remember when I was a young kid. I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house, and I'd always I'd stare at that rack, and they, and when they moved, they had built a new house. And my grandmother said, "Well, that's not that's not hanging in the living room. That, put that out in the garage." So I I take the I go out to the garage, and I was talking to my grandfather. He's like, "Well, you, she won't let me keep it in the house anymore. You might as well just take it with you." All right, cool. So I I took that, and I weren't very old. I might have been first, second grade, and that that rack hung in my bedroom through my childhood and I'd lay it there at night and just stare at that thing like man I I don't know what this hunting thing's all about but I, I want to do that you yeah. know I want to do that and um so a year after he passed I, I took the rack and I I had a good buddy Jordan Putri get me a cape and I had the buck mounted and oh good for you um but you know that was the first time I'd carried my grandfather's pocket knife when I was hunting when I shot that 162. No kidding. Yep. Wow. Well, I bet yep. you it's going the. <laughs> oh yeah, it'll be it'll be in my it'll be going it'll be in my po- it'll be in my yeah. pocket. You yeah, know. that's awesome. But no, that's uh, yeah. That's that's a that was the trigger point right there. Yeah, it was the trigger point. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can remember when I was a kid, the thing that used to always, and this is gonna sound silly, but what used to always get me is the bullets. Yep. You know, my dad would be getting ready to go hunting, and he used to wear one of those like. Be- those belts and all the bullets went in, yeah. yeah. And um, I'd take them out and I'd just sit there and play with them and just yeah. could not wait. So my dad made me earn being able to go to camp. So they went to northern New Hampshire, Pittsburgh area, almost every yeah. year. And it was a tradition. It wasn't – I mean, they shot some good bucks. They, they, they big woods hunt, but they didn't do a ton of tracking. I call my dad an opportunistic tracker. If the track's right. there, he's going to track it. He shot bucks right. tracking. Um but yeah, it was always for me. It was always those bullets. I would just sit there yeah. and play with them and yeah. get me all pumped up. Yeah, yeah. But no, it's uh... well, this has been great. Thanks for uh, yeah. Well, thanks for thing. having me. I really appreciate it. And I wish I wish Luke would have been so bashful and hopped on here. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll, we'll then, maybe we'll do it again. Maybe yeah. we'll get him on. Maybe next year after you shoot that Pope and Young. Well, we'll, well, that's I, right. Hopefully, it's it's his turn this year to get a good one. He he puts his time in. So sounds like a pretty selfless friend. That's awesome. A very selfless friend. Yeah. for sure. Definitely appreciate you coming on and yeah, uh, well, look, look forward to uh, your Facebook posts. Absolutely. Yeah. You too. Enjoy I, I, the show. I really enjoy the stuff you guys are putting out and a lot, a lot of us do. It's, it's, a, it's fun. You it's know, we, fun. It we're giving people, fun. We're giving people a platform for a voice. I mean, right. you know, it's fun listening to the stories and it's it's a great opportunity to give everybody else the opportunity to listen to your story. So, yes. again, thanks for, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thanks for sharing it. No, I appreciate it very much. Good. Good. It was good to see you guys. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep. So you guys had a pretty good year last year, huh? Yeah, we did have a pretty good year. Um, I'd consider it my best year just because uh, missed. I, cause I, I missed a lot of deer, but to see that many mature bucks is anytime you're in the woods and you're seeing mature bucks, it's a good year. You're so. doing something right. Yeah, you're doing something them. right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I shot a good buck opening day of rifle season in New Hampshire. I shot two does in Vermont. One with a bow, one with a muzzleloader, early season. Trying to fill the freezer so that I could be a little bit more picky. And um, then I, I smashed Maine, 
missed three up there with my rifle and then uh, went to Massachusetts and tracked a couple with no horns. But other than that, I consider it a pretty stellar year. You got into some bucks by the sounds end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, even bow season in New Hampshire, I got into two two good ones, but unfortunately missed both. Um, so, but still, I, I consider that a yeah. wicked year for the for New, New Hampshire and Maine and Vermont. So You also saw a big one during archery season too, didn't you? Yeah, that's one of the ones I missed. That Yeah, that was a giant. Um, that one stings a little bit to this day. Yeah. Uh, that's one of those ones where you just think about, you know, you're laying in bed in the middle of night on on X, just like <laughs> yeah. sleeping. Where is he sleeping right now? Yep. You know what I mean? There's even still alive because, you know, he's age class wise, he's got, I mean, he's got soda cans. So, he, you know, he's, he's an old buck. Yeah, he's an old buck. You can see it in his face and stuff too and it takes a long time to get an eight pointer up in the 140s mm -hmm. low 150s so that's a big deer yeah it's a big deer so yeah and johnny had a stellar year too yeah you know i wish it was definitely a big learning year for me and i i really started making a lot of things a lot of connections and stuff and uh but i you know i missed uh and i missed a few bucks and um but i got my best buck that i've, I've shot rack wise for sure and uh, that I was shot, that a bow buck? Yeah, that was a bow buck. Okay, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah. So I, I shot a small buck like the fourth day of, of archery season in New Hampshire, and uh, I had passed up like a pile of those, a, a few small bucks, and uh, I was really, I really wanted this one, this one six pointer that I ended up killing, but uh, it just all this pressure of seeing everyone shooting deer and stuff, and I yeah. really, I just, I wanted to get some practice in for Wisconsin, just like know my equipment, my archery equipment was on and stuff, so. I shot that buck, um, and then as I'm dragging that that smaller buck out, I uh, I saw the six pointer end up killing. I, I mean, me, a buddy, and his girlfriend were like crashing down through the woods, and we throw the buck down onto like a log road, and then we jump down, and he's bedded like 60, no 60 yards away on the log road, looking back at us. And then he stands up, and he he never like t tore off or anything, just like just slowly yeah. walked off and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but at that point, I, yeah, I, when I saw him in person, um, I knew I really, really wanted him. No, that was the, that was the buck you shot. Yeah, that was the buck I ended okay. up shooting. Yeah. So how far from there did you kill that buck? So, not far. I mean, uh, I knew he was in there, hanging in there pretty tight, and I, I had a couple cameras in there, but it wasn't until after the season when I checked the camera, that or after I shot him, that I checked that camera. He was on it like within a month, like during the season. He, September 15th to October 16th when I shot him. I believe he was on that camera 20 different days. Like, he was, he was, he was living right there. <laughs> and uh, I knew he was in there just by, like, checking uh, a few of the knobs around that uh, I was seeing buck sign and stuff. And um, by, based by the one camera I was checking when I was going in there, that was just pretty, like, you know, low intrusion camera check. Mm -hmm. um, he was really, like, the only buck I was getting on camera. So, I mean, I knew he was, he you know, he was kind of, like, the king... Yeah, and that. you called them in too. Yeah, so the story was, was really cool. I so I sat Saturday night, the fifteenth of October, and I sat there really, really late. Like I just uh, I waited until like eight thirty, nine o'clock, and I, I got down and I had a, a drag rag and a you know a bunch of dough urine and stuff. And I there was four knobs I thought he was bedding on, and I was hoping that by that point he'd kind of worked off into the ag and stuff, and uh, or or up on the the ridge with the acorns and stuff. So I uh, I drag ragged four different. Um, knobs that I was figuring to be bedded on, I'd bring it right back down to the saddle where I ended up shooting them. And then that mor the next morning, I, uh, I drag ragged my whole access into where that, that stand was at the saddle. And every half an hour from uh, daylight to when I shot him, I was doe bleeding, just a couple of doe mm -hmm. bleeds. And actually it was the coolest thing ever. I've, I've, the first and only time I've ever heard a buck roar, but I heard like this loud, like it like scared me. It was, it was just like, Row! and I, I looked and there he was standing there like 200 yards through the woods, just the sun was hitting him perfect. It was just the most beautiful thing ever. No kidding. Yeah, and uh, I, I, t I couldn't. I was shaking so bad I couldn't grab my my grunt too fast enough. <laughs> and I just, I just turned my head and I grunted three times, and it was like watching a, a big buck hunter video game. Like he just came <laughs> running through the woods, um, tw like twisting through the woods and stuff. Jumped over a blowdown, and uh, one of the the knobs, or whatever in that saddle I was sitting on. He was headed right for that because that's where my my uh, thermals were sucking up, and uh, he like came came at the base of my tree. I thought he was gonna come to the base of my tree, then turned, headed up the hill towards uh, that knob to get my wind. And the second he got it, it was like like his couple head bobs, and then like he had me. His ass flipped around, and he was like he was facing me, 
And uh, so he had me pinned, and the whole time as he's coming in, I'm just like, like this is sweet, but I'm like, he's not yours yet. He's not yours yet. And uh, I had my bow drawn back, or like I had my string to my face, and he had me pinned, and I just pushed my bow straight away. And the second my my bow came to full draw, I just like everything was perfect. My anchor points, everything was like it was like it was meant to be, and my housing was just poof, right on him. And uh, I figured 30, pulled the trigger, and uh, he it went right in the white line. And he was uphill for me, so I smoked him right in the heart. Yeah. And then the exit was actually like center mass up. Oh, but, perfect. Uh, but he took off, and he just, I just never heard him stop running. Like it was just, it just faded out. So I'm like, I think I just smashed him, but you know, like it sounded like he went away. Yeah. So I'm like freaking out. I'm calling people, saying I don't know what to do. That's like the worst. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I hate you that always feeling. Yeah. Even yeah. if you smoke one, you just always have that doubt. Yep. And uh, I, I called a buddy. And he's like, Well, he goes, Did you hit him or did you miss him? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, well, I'm not coming to help you look for him until you send me a picture of a bloody arrow. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So I get down, and I go up to where he's standing, and I stood there for like five minutes just trying to like, I'm like, he was definitely standing here. He was just running tracks, and I didn't see any blood right away, but then I looked, and my arrow, I was like five feet from my arrow, and it was jammed in a hemlock, and there was half an hour, 40 minutes later, and there's blood still dripping off the knock, and no I'm kidding. like, oh, I'm like, I smashed him. So I took his track, and I probably went like 350, 400 yards, just... I mean, like, waiting for him to, to show up and stuff. I was taking the track, and uh, I went, I kept going, kept going, and he was bleeding good, but I was just getting so worried, and he kept calling me, like, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. So I uh, turned around, went, and got him, and uh, we went back, and he's like, where, where was last blood? And I'm like, well, last blood was over here somewhere. And uh, he's like, all right, have your bow ready. And he goes, I'll take the track, just have your bow ready, just in case he's still alive or something. And we took like two steps. I just looked back. I'm like, he's right there. <laughs> and he was, if I had to take the track another 10 yards, I probably would have seen him. I just like went over the next knob. He was, he was later right there. So but, he didn't go too far then. No. Well, yeah. I mean, he, he went 450 yards oh, wow. on, on a hard shot. Yeah. No kidding. So, uh, They're tough animals. Yeah. But, especially that time of year. Yeah. 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 So that was October 16th. It was a very like brave thing for me to do. Like, like drag rag, grunt, and like use so much vocalization and stuff because it, you know, it was, I feel like it was pretty early, but uh, it worked. I, yeah, yeah, but it I, worked. I was going to Wisconsin like the next weekend, so that was my last like my hail mary at, at trying to shoot him, and uh, that was Sunday, so it was my really my last hunt. I had to to kill him, so mm -hmm. I uh, yeah, it just it worked out perfect. Yeah. And, uh, now is that your first time doing a scent drag? Yeah. So when I went out to Ohio a couple years before, I went out with some people, and there was a, a kid that I went with that uh, that did it. And it worked perfect for him. Like, and what did you like, put on that? Dough and heat? Yep. 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 And uh, and you think that buck you shot followed that scent trail? I think so. Yeah. Yep. He was, yeah. So I dragged it. When I, my axis, I go right up like the center of the swamp. And then, and then I cut in. I, you know, I go in about a mile and then I, and I cut in um, whatever. That was you know, a few hundred yards off. And he was down that swamp. You know, this, the sun was hitting that swamp like perfectly. And uh, and he came right in from, from there. That's but, awesome. Yeah. It was, it was sweet. He, his, uh, he had his mouth, like his tongue was hanging out of his mouth. His uh, his ears were like coned like forward, like he was oh, yeah. he was looking, and his tail was wagging like a dog. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Wanted, and it was yeah. like he was, he was yeah. and, and he roared and stuff. I mean, he was he was definitely on it. Yeah, and, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, yeah so that, that that's exactly last year. Not the same scenario opening day, but pretty much I sent dragged up from my access, and I don't know if that's what made him. I that's not what made them come in, but I think it might have helped when that doe finally got there. Mm -hmm. yeah. That she smelled she smelled me. But she also smelled hot dough, and I think that helped. But Kinda also, keep her there yeah, for keep a her few there minutes. for a few minutes. And I also, that was the first time I ever heard a roar was that mm -hmm. bug. So it's kind of yeah. cool no that yeah, you know yeah. the stories are pretty similar. Yeah. And that was yeah. early in the year too. I mean, that was first day of rifles in New Hampshire. So I mean, I mean, not it's still you know they're starting to rot. Yeah, but it's not yeah. as early as uh, obviously October. Yeah. But it seems like those bucks mid October time where they're ready for yeah. it. Oh, yeah, oh, they're ready for it. So yeah, they, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If they know there's one yeah. in the area. They're, they're definitely yeah, on they're it. looking. And especially yeah. younger, especially that middle age or younger class bucks too. They're yeah. definitely. I mean, the bigger bucks are. Don't get me wrong. They're definitely moving that time of year. But mm -hmm. those young bucks. I mean, bow season. Yeah. I mean, they're just like they're yeah. like everywhere. They're antsy. They're yeah. antsy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're moving. Uh, yeah, they're moving a yeah. lot. <clears throat> doing a lot of chasing. Yeah, you guys hunt a lot of big woods, don't you? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, me primarily, I grew up hunting smaller patches of woods. I, I, I grew up in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. And I, you know, I hunt a lot of Waterford and small patches, and you know, there's big deer shot everywhere. But I just that curiosity, you know, I grew up watching people like Jeff Doyle, you know, all these guys, mm -hmm. and I just 
I mean, my eyes are just like glued to the TV yep. right. and listening to the Benoit and I just, I wanted it so bad. And then my, my mom married a guy that lives right dead in the White Mountains and I moved there and I hunted there a little bit when I was like 14 and 15, but you know, I, I was just a little kid, you know, two, 300 yards in the woods. So I was, you know, big woods hunter. Yeah. And then I turned 16, I had my license and I said, I'm going to track my first buck this year. And I did. And I've been hooked ever since. And yeah. it was a four point. I was on the track of an, looking back now, I'm like, oh, what did you do? You know, but I, it, that buck, I mean, you know, I tracked him or tracked the big one, jumped a spike horn in that four pointer, knew they were bucks, got on their tracks, gave them 30 minutes, went up, crossed the swamp, hardwood ridge. I stopped, called with my mouth and I had them both come right to me. That's so awesome. like for a kid, like 16 years old, I mean, I was like, you're fired. Right oh, up, I was sure. fired right up. Yeah. And I mean, I was just hooked. And then the next year, I was, you know, 17, and I told myself, I said, I will not shoot a young buck. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a big buck, and I'm going to do it the same way I want to, track. And um, I, uh, I even had uh, had some small buck tracks, and I, I, I would take the day off of school. My pa- thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, I love my dad. He's a pretty good guy, and and I wouldn't tell my mom, but my dad, he'd let me, you know, if I, he'd let me take the day off if I was on a big buck. And, <laughs> yep. and you know, I had a couple cross the road, you know, on the way to school, I was waking up and doing road work. And <laughs> I found a couple mediocres and, but one morning I found the one and, uh, I got on that buck and that buck, uh, five miles later and I ended up shooting him. I jumped him out of his bed, got him to stop and I shot him and it was a quite a bit of a chase. My first shot was mediocre. It was it was low in the iron pit, so he was bleeding and he felt sick. But it wasn't like gonna kill him. Mm-hmm. Or it was gonna kill him, but not. But you had and, snow, right? Yeah, and I yeah. had snow, and um, uh, and uh, yeah, I put three more into him. I mean, they're just such tough animals, and, and that sounds like it's, you know, it sounds like it's a horrible thing to do, but it it, it was the quickest way to put him down. Yeah. I don't care how what how you hunt. Eventually, you're gonna make a mediocre it's gonna shot. Happen. It's gonna happen. Doesn't matter who but you are. But the nice thing is, is the style I do, I can run. I run a deer down hard, mm-hmm. and I do it quickly. I don't. If I have blood on the snow, I know everyone's different. Some people give them time. If there's a bullet in a deer, I'm I'm full speed ahead. Right. You've got and a gun in your hand. Yeah. If I have a gun in the hand, now yeah. bow's different. But if I have a gun in the hand, that deer's getting ran down. Mm-hmm. And um, but yeah, that that deer really hooked me. Once I felt that 130 inches of rack, yeah. I was just like <laughs> hard to go back after. Oh, that. Oh yeah, then. I haven't gone back. It's just <laughs> yeah. like you know what I mean. It's a and, and, and that sounds like a trophy hunter, and I would consider I would consider myself a trophy hunter in the fact that I know what I want, and I I love watching deer get old. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I love watching them get old, and you know it's there's a level of respect to them too. And you know if I shot the first four pointer that just came came to me, then it you know I I just hold myself to a different yeah. standard. You wouldn't have all these experiences you have now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like letting these younger yeah. bucks go now. Yeah, I'm not trigger happy. Yeah, exactly. You know, and if I let a big one go, I gotta grin ear to ear. Right. You know what I mean? No, like, you could killed them. Let him go, yeah, but you know, like miss him or whatever. You know, I love it. Yeah. I just love the chase. Just as good as killing one. It's just right. as yeah. good. Like Massachusetts, when I tracked those two bucks and no headgear, I, I took a couple of videos. I don't think I posted them or anything, but you know, I was, I was, I mean, my face hurt. I was smiling. Yeah. So hard. You know, I caught two mature bucks in their bed, and one of them I jumped nine times. Yeah, tell those stories. Those are pretty okay, good yeah. ones. Okay. So, this is your first year in Massachusetts. First year in Mass. Yeah. Yeah. So I went down, hunted. Uh, Northeast, um, or Northwest, sorry, Northwest Massachusetts, Big Woods. Well, big for Massachusetts, found the biggest patch I could. And uh, I went in there and hunted a couple days. And then on the third day, I, uh, I, I, I was tracking a big one. Medi- or he was big for down there. And I was tracking him, tracking him, tracking him. Jumped him four times that day or five times that day, random hard, never saw him. I nicknamed him Ghost, because that's rare for me to at least not catch, I didn't even catch a tail. Like I was coming to running tracks out of beds, that's it. And that was bothering me. I mean, like normally I can at least see them. I'm like, this deer, late season Yeah, like late that. season. Yeah. I mean, he was smart. This deer was not stupid. And um, so I tracked him and now I'm going, and my brother was with me. And we're starting to get on the other side of this big patch and it's getting late. And I looked at him and I said, we don't have service in here, but I said, you drive around and you park where that, that is on my map. I said, and I'll be there at dark and I'm going to run this deer till dark. And I ran him and I ran him to dark and I knew he was just, he was going to be just bed, pretty much bedded. So the next morning I went in or no, sorry, on the way out that night, I'm on my way out and it was like an hour left to dark and maybe an hour and a half, two hours. And I'm starting heading, heading, heading. And, um, uh, 
I caught a smoke, I mean, smoking fresh, but not just smoking fresh. I mean, giant. Like, I'd take this track in Maine. It's big. And I get on it, and he was, he was meandering and feeding instantly. And I'm like, all right, just slow down. Take your time. So I did, and not even 100 yards later, I caught him right in his bed. And I thought I had him. Like, I'm like, you are so done. <laughs> and I pull up, and just two big pretty brown patches oh, man. and i'm like i mean you could just tell too like i'm looking at this deer in his bed he's long he's still thick he's got a huge just a chunk of a head big roman nose i'm like you gotta be kidding me but i was happy yeah so i, I was on the way out and it cost me what like 250 yards of walking i'm mm-hmm. like that's awesome like cherry on top and the confidence booster just confidence yeah, booster exactly. for tomorrow yeah. too and so then i went in the next day went straight to those tracks sure enough that deer didn't bed 200 yards from where i left him and I came in from the back side. Uh, it was a little bit quicker access on the other side because we had gone to the other side and and uh, jumped him out of that bed. Never saw him. I'm like, come on. I'm like, I give you all night and you still are just, you're quick. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm, I nicknamed him Ghost. Knows the game. Yeah, he knows the game very well. And four jumps later, he was starting to meander and I just hit the brakes. And I mean, I just, I mean, I, I soft footed it hard. And I'm, that's rare for me. Mm-hmm. And I caught him behind a blowdown, bedded, same thing. I, I, I see him first, I pull up, and then he kind of like sees me pull my gun up and then stands up. And I mean, just stands right up out of the brush pile and I could smoke him right there and no headgear too. Dang. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what though? I took a video, I have video of both of them in my scope. And I, to be honest with you, that makes me feel like, it's almost like you got them, like you got the experience of, I guess, mm-hmm. so-and-so killing him, but you didn't have to take a life. Yep, exactly. So it was I felt like like I was like I was accomplished. Like yeah. I felt accomplished at that moment. If he hadn't shit out, you would have had a nice buck. Both oh of those yeah, times. both of those yeah. times. And and and, and like yeah, I, I just felt aw- it just felt really good. Mm-hmm. It felt really good. So how many years have you been tracking? Since I was sixteen. Okay. Yeah. And how 16, old are you now? I'm twenty one. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like I said. I I mean I grew up. My dad. My dad hunted big woods, but you know he had two. We're, I'm a twin, so he had two little cubs tripping, fall, trying to keep up with him in the woods. So he did. We did a lot of sitting small woods, like I said, St. John's Bay area, and you know there's a lot of deer over there, mm-hmm. but you're not getting the caliber of the deer we get in you know New Hampshire and in Maine in these big woods. Now it's hard to kill these deer in these big woods, but now that I'm older. You know, my dad's not dragging me, carrying my pack. Yep. You know, I'm tired. You know, you know, it, there's none of that anymore. If anything, I'm probably carrying him up the hill now. Yeah. So, so yeah. But uh, yeah, so I've been tracking since I'm 16. Since I was 16, and uh, I'm just addicted. That's, that's your just, favorite way to hunt. That is my favorite yeah. way to hunt. I mean, I've killed, I've killed mature deer both ways, tracking and sitting. Last year's Buck New Hampshire was sitting just because it was, you know, no snow. And uh, you know, I believe in having a my dad taught me a lot about sitting, and I'm very thankful for that because, you know, you, you, the, amount, the more arrows you have in your quiver for different things, the more successful you're mm-hmm. going to be. Because muzzleover season in New Hampshire, we haven't had snow in the last, what, three years? Yeah. Probably three years. It's so, never a guarantee. Yeah, it's never, snow is never a guarantee. So what I did, though, where I killed that buck last year, tracking is what showed me that spot. Yep. I had tracked four or five different mature bucks, and they went through the same saddle. That's a great way to learn new country. It is an amazing yeah. way. Mm-hmm. And they all went up, hit that saddle, and either went left to right to the green knobs. And, I mean, we're talking rabbit jail. And that's where they were betting. So what I, what I did last year was I just I went in there, muzzleover season. It was like the third – or no, it was, like, it was two days before rifle or whatever, right? Or it might have been the last day of muzzleover season anyways. I made a mock scrape. I peed in it. And on his scrape line. And um, – I went in opening day rifle and that buck and a doe came out and it, it, it's just that if I hadn't attract deer through that exact like that exact spot and it's a small saddle it's not it's not a big saddle I mean I can see I'm only it's a 200 yard saddle and um, that that just it, it tracking showed me that yeah. spot and it's the same thing with Maine I found I found spot where you walk in and you're like is this even Maine there's so many deer in here but. I think a lot of people on dry ground, they would never, I would have never went in there, but those tracks brought me in there, and next thing you know, you're in you're in a barnyard of deer, mm-hmm. and tracking will show you those spots. And each year, those are probably good spots to oh, hang yeah. out, whether it's yeah. bare ground or snow. Yeah, and in Maine, you know, it's hard to kill a big buck in, uh, without snow on the mm-hmm. ground. It's a, hard, it's a hard feat, and um, the last couple of years, we've been pretty successful killing bucks on dry ground yeah. because of what we do when we track. They'll bring us into these little pockets, and stuff and i'm actually really excited because last year 
between me and my brother, we found two different swamps that, I mean, it is like, it is so impressive. And you just, you just go in there and you're just seeing like, there's just deer everywhere. Mm -hmm. And for Northern Maine where we hunt, that is just rare. I mean, it's taken us a long time to find those. And uh, we ended up getting one buck out of there last year in, in the swamp I found. And the next day after, it was my buddy, we double teamed him. He shot that buck. And the next day I went in the same swamp, tracked a buck, and I had him coming right at me. And there's just like, it's a, like a 25 yard shot swamp. And all I could see was just racking his feet. And I just, I couldn't get, in a, yeah. I could never get a shot. But I'm telling you, he was, he was a beauty. And that one I never shot at, so I can't count that as a miss. But that's one of those mature bucks I saw that just make you want to come yeah, back for exactly. more. It just makes me want to go dive in that swamp right now, you I'm know. I'm sure you're fired up the next day to get back out there. Oh, yeah. It, it, and it is a confidence booster. Every buck you see, when I first started, every buck I messed up on, it hurt. And I, and I would be butt hurt about it. And then the, the older I've gotten and the more I've seen, it's like, no, I'm actually... I'm doing something. Yeah. You know, if you're, I'll tell you now, if you're seeing big bucks, even if it's one a year, you're doing something. Even if you're not getting shots no, off. No, even if you're not even getting shots yeah. off, you're doing something. You're putting yourself in the right yeah, spots to see are. those deer. And eventually, two points connect, yep. and it works. Yep, exactly. So, yeah. So you like to hunt big woods. What do you look for in a new area when you're going to scout? <laughs> do you go in with a <laughs> rifle in hand, or do you just do you scout preseason? Do so, you scout in the winter? Normally, I don't scout much, but the last two years, I've been doing some scouting. Okay. And mostly for bow. I've been really trying to kill a big buck with my bow. Last year, I came close. This year, we'll see um, if it even happens. Um, and But when I what I'm looking for, to be honest with you, is, is a nice green top. Yep. I love green tops. So you like to hunt high? I like to hunt high. Mm -hmm. I'm a mount... I, it's my curiosity that brings me up there. Yep. I, I know there's deer going down yeah. in the swamps, but man, my curiosity is like, you know what? I'm going up top there. You know, you just you just picture some like 160 inch like gnarly deer that lives up there in a hole. Oh yeah. And you're hoping you like trip, fall in the hole, and shoot him. You know, yep. like that's what you just picture. The mystique of knowing what's up there. Yeah, or it, it could is. Be up there. And same thing with the big swamp. You know, you get yep. the same like feeling of like, oh, I wonder what's lurking in right. here. But I do like like Lenny. I've heard Lenny Benoit say this. You know, a big hardwood ridge with no swamp at the bottom, don't waste your time. Yep. And he and, and I'm not saying a buck won't cruise through there, but he's 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 right about that. Um, you know, they like that green. You gotta they have like a good that, mix they, of, you of like, everything. You and there's yeah, you want a good mix and, and thankfully in, in the White Mountains we have a lot of those decent food down low, decent areas, river bottoms with good food, mm -hmm. and then you've got nice green tops at the and, yep. and, and they can and I've and I've shot deer down low, um, down by the river bottoms, but I just I really like those tops. Yeah. I just do. Yeah. Just your style. Just my style. And, and cuts, I do like cuts. Um, I don't really focus on them too much, to be honest with you. I, I really try to focus on where those deer are hitting, like, middle of the day. Mm -hmm. Like, where where is this buck? I try to get in the mind of a mature buck of, like, where would I feel most comfortable that I'm not going to get touched? Yeah, in daylight. In daylight. Yep. Because there's no such thing as a nocturnal deer. Right. They're alive, moving daylight somewhere. Now, may, they might be sleeping somewhere, but hopefully you can find that. And I just, I have found that the tops, it's yep. usually pretty good up there. And you were saying you don't run many cameras either, so you're... No, I don't. Yeah. I, 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 I've I ran cameras. You know, a lot of the bucks, the first big buck I killed, I had him on camera, but it wasn't in my camera, it was my grandfather's camera. Sure. And I would chuck it, you know, he did it for fun, and he's not really a big deer hunter, but he did it for fun, and, and I love looking at pictures, don't get me wrong. And I'll put cameras out, like this year we've put some cameras out, and uh, I just, I don't know, I just have always loved the... I don't know. I just I never had success, and it's never helped me kill a big deer. Yeah. So I just never have used it. Now that I'm bow hunting, it's kind of nice to you know trying to bow hunt a big buck. It's kind of nice to know. Okay, am I am I in the area mm -hmm. of a bow a bow buck that I want? Because they don't move a lot that t this time of year. Right. So if you find one, it's nice to know. Like I mean, you can tell by tracks on the ground too, but. You know, it's it's nice to run cameras, and I just love seeing pictures of big deer. Especially if you're yeah. going to be sitting there, you kind of like to have a little bit of yeah, confidence. Reassurance. Confidence, yeah. reassurance, reassurance, reassurance exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I was young, I probably got burnt out from cameras because when I was young, it ruined. I yeah. think I ruined myself a couple times, like, relying on them, or I'd go in and I'd check them, and they're just nighttime pictures, and I'd be like, I can't believe there's no daylight pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? Your camera's only picking up 15 feet in the yeah. woods. And then November, they're not taking the same trail every single day, most likely. So, That's it. A lot of guys rely too much on the cameras yeah. where the deer could be walking the trail right behind the camera yeah. or right off the side of it or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a big instinctual person. Like, mm -hmm. I believe that you just kind of, like, go with your gut. Like, yeah. take it easy. Just go with your gut. And, uh, you know, and, and, 
And deer, you know, annually different deer, they're going to do similar things. Now there's going to be deer, have, certain deer have certain patterns, but you know, if you figure out like, like saddles, pinch points, I mean, those are geological features. I'm a big geological feature guy. Those are always going to produce. They have to. You so know, when it, you say that, you're talking like saddles or saddles, ridges that dump down. And yeah, meet fingers, spot, like I like fingers, fingers yeah. stuff like that. But I really love saddles and I love pinch points. And it's the reason why is because you know a deer can't go up an 80 foot sheer sheer ledge. I mean, some I've tracked some billy goats before, but you know, not they're not going straight up a wall. Right. And if you have one small saddle, they have to go through. When they're rut and they're especially when they're zombie walking, if you set that for a week straight, you're eventually going to probably lay eyes mm -hmm. on a mature buck. And um, oftentimes you don't see sign in those types of spots. No, you from don't. What I've gathered. No, you don't. And I've actually told a lot of people this, and they they think I'm crazy when I say this, but I say don't you don't sometimes just stay away from the sign. Yeah. And and I've killed two big bucks in spots that there's actually not a ton of sign. Mm -hmm. Now that now one of the bucks I killed. Last year, he was on a. The, the, there's really no sign, except in that one saddle. But if you go, if you go to where they're bedding, there's no rubs. There's no. Well, I say there's no rubs. I mean, every once in a while you'll find a rub here sure. and there. But not like a feeding area that's no, just tore no, up. No, no, no. You're not. Hunts. Yeah, down. But down low. Yeah. Oh my word. I mean, it's pounded. Yeah. I mean, you can, Yeah, it's pounded. I mean, you're talking huge signpost. I mean, popple trees that are just shredded. Mm -hmm. Scrape lines. And I, I found that a lot of those deer, like tracking them, same thing. You know, they lay a ton of sign down low there at night, like three and four in the morning. They're just pounding, pounding down low. And then they go up the mountain, they do a little feeding, and then they're at the top yep. sleeping. And the sign kind of fizzles out as the they're going up. The sign fizzles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I, that's part of the reason why I like that saddle is because not every saddle has one trail with a scrape line going right through it. Yeah. Like I found that, when I found that, I'm like, I probably should pay attention right. to it. And it worked last year. And if you find certain spots like that annually, I believe that I could hunt that probably the rest of my life and it's probably going to produce for me. Right. Um, not every time I sit it, obviously. But you put but enough time in there, sooner or later you're going to have a nice buck exactly. pass through that spot. Yeah, exactly. Not even just that spot. I mean, that entire that entire ridge is just good. And it's mm -hmm. it, every ridge in New Hampshire and Vermont has at least one buck you probably want to shoot yeah. on it. You just got to find them. They're, they're hard to find. They're not, they're good at what they do. Yeah. They get so much country they could be in. They do. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of food too. And, it, and that's kind of separated. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's not, they don't have, they're not limited to one apple orchard. They're not limited to one cut or anything like that. I mean, sometimes in the white mountains, some spots aren't cut. And then some are, so that kind of helps draw a lot of deer. Like I just found a spot, and um, I almost said this said the spot. <laughs> Good thing I didn't. No beeping on that one. But uh, you know, there's there's a ton of sign right behind that two year old cut. Like not like old sign, like old trails. I mean, like so trails that were just made because of that fresh cut. Yeah. And in that specific area, there's not a lot of food, except the tops and the swamps. So f when they put that cut in, and there hasn't been a cut in that area for. I think the cut that's probably is probably nine, ten years old, and they just went. I, th I think nine or ten years old, and they just went in and put a fresh cut. So now the deer are like it's like a food plot. For it's them. like a food plot. Yep. It's a natural food plot, and and that spot bow is definitely yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be some time spent because they're probably in there this time of year. A they lot. are. There's a ton of fresh sun yeah. in there, and um, yeah, this rain's actually helped with scouting too because it's raining so much you can tell what's fresh sign and what's not you know if you yeah. find a sharp track in the dirt and it rained two days ago well that's been within two days and those are great areas to find those tracks is in the logged areas it is because you're fresh trails, dirt skid trails whatever yeah yeah, yeah. fresh yeah. dirt yeah for sure so you guys like to really get after it what's your plans for the fall johnny go for it <laughs> well i mean i got a pretty packed fall i think i'm i'm really gonna try from september 15th to when I leave for Wisconsin, which is gonna be like the last week of October, I'm gonna be there for like two weeks. Nice. In search of vengeance um, from last year, and uh, I'm really gonna spend that that month really just trying to shoot, you know, one good buck with my bow, mm -hmm. you know, um, and preferably like a you know three and a half year old something something nice. But whether that's Vermont, New Hampshire, you know, I'm, you know, watching a couple you know okay bucks whatever you know here and there and stuff. So, but you know, then after that, uh, I'm gonna go to Maine. Um, Thanksgiving week, and then got Massachusetts. We're gonna double team a buck. Nice. Yeah. John, yeah. We're, yeah. Gonna, we're gonna smash too. I can yeah. feel it right now. Yeah. We're I'm gonna sure you guys it. will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, hope, I, hope, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's definitely yeah. the mindset. Yeah, definitely the 100%. mindset. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm pretty new to like tracking in like big woods. To be honest, I mean I I was very fortunate. I grew up on a pretty big farm, like a 500 acre farm. You know, 
uh, shared between me, my brothers, my dad, uh, uncle, you know, neighbors and stuff. So it's not, it wasn't like I just had it to myself, but like from the time I could, you know, was really interested in just getting out in the outdoors, I, uh, you know, always had like, you know, that to, to refer to. Um, you know, I've probably shot, I don't know, seven or eight bucks in Vermont, and I got to the point where, you know, I was, I was sick of looking at the same stuff. You yeah. Know? So it was about two years ago I really started, you know, branching out, and uh, and I just loved everything I saw. You know, just was like, just it just opened up my horizon to, you know, for you know so much stuff. I, you know, I started going out mid Midwest and stuff. Um, last year, you know, I was having a great year, <laughs> and then the first, the first snowstorm we had that first Wednesday of rifle season, Vermont rifle season. Uh, my boss asked me if I could come in. We had to pour some concrete, <laughs> pour concrete in the in the snow. I'm a plumber, but he's building a shop, so um, I I told him like, yeah, I can come in, but I I really wanted to do some tracking. So I I I just went down the road a little ways. I saw a track that cut across the road. I tracked him, or whatever. It wasn't a big buck, whatever, but I knew it was a buck, you know. And um, I tracked him, and uh, I ended up catching him. He was he was a small four pointer. I, I didn't want to shoot, and uh, it. I really, I did kind of want to shoot him just so I could like have the extra excuse of you know, showing up late because yeah. I knew I was gonna be late. But so then I'm rushing to work and I'm I'm coming around the corner and my gun was in my was in the passenger seat of my truck and it started to slide in the passenger seat of my truck. So I'm fiddling around with it and I look up and I'm heading straight off the corner. Oh <laughs> and no! I uh, totaled my truck. So then the, my entire rifle season, I was yeah, that you know wrecked your season. yeah wrecked oh. my season. I was I was worried about you know insurance and stuff and I like waiting for the insurance call back and. I, you know, I was fiddling around with rentals. I didn't want to, like, you know, bury a rental in a, right. in a snow bank, whatever, you know, like, yeah. track it, you know. So I, I really didn't, I didn't really didn't hunt much, the rifle season stuff. And, but then I went to Pennsylvania, um, you know, I went with, like, a group of people. We, we shot a buck, like, almost every day. It's, it was a really cool trip, I, but I missed a giant, yeah, a really nice. No kidding. Yeah, a really nice 10. And that was bow season? Uh, late, uh, it was the second week of rifle season okay. in Pennsylvania. Yep. Nice. Yep. Yeah, second week. So it was... Um, the places we were hunting were fairly, you know, already pretty heavily hunted. Like, they, the, they already had the first week to get pretty thinned out. But yeah. we still did some pretty good damage. And like I said, I, I had my opportunity on a, a pretty nice buck. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. What about you, Nate? What's your plans? Well, I'm moving to Colorado. I'm moving out west. But I already bought my tickets to come back for November. Okay. I'm, I've had so many people say to me, you know, like, are you going to hunt out there? And I'm like, I would love to kill an elk. I'd love to kill a mule deer. But... I'll pass that up for 115 yeah. New England deer every day. Yep. Like I just, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm, so I, I bought my tickets already. I'm coming back for December, Massachusetts, and I'm coming back for November, like Thanksgiving area time, and wherever there's snow is where my tr truck's gonna be. Yep. And just chasing um, snow. Just this chasing season. snow, and and I started my own business this year, and that's really helped set up like my schedule for being able to. To do that, like be able to chase snow, and and I think that I'm going to continue that path, so that way I can choose and pick yep. my time, and um, I think that's going to make a huge yeah. difference. But my plan is, is I really honestly want to see my dad kill a big buck with his bow. That's been his dream his entire life. He's killed monsters with his rifle, but I that's why I'm scouting really hard right now. Is I don't Put think I'm going to get too much. Buck. Yeah, I don't think yep. I'm going to get a crazy. Like I don't think I'm going to get really any bow season in. I'm just going to use all my time for rifle. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year I didn't shoot a buck tracking, and that really, like, I just, I really want to. And um, so, yeah, that's kind of what my plan is. I'm coming back, and I'm going to, I just want to live out west for a little bit, get the feel, like, I'm young. I don't have kids. I right. don't have responsibilities. And everyone in my life, that's all that tells me to do it now. So, I'm so you're going out there just for uh, yeah, to I'm, something Yeah, I'm going to go out, yeah, I'm going to go out there, and um, I'm, going to, I'm going to a Bible college, and... Um, but while I'm out there, I'm just, I have family out there too. So my mom's originally from Cody, Wyoming. So I'm going to spend time with family out there. And nice. I'll probably do some hunting out there. But like I said, I already have my plane tickets. Yeah. I, I'm addicted to New England hunting. I yeah, just, it's yeah. hard to leave. It is hard to leave. It's not better hunting than out there. No, it's, it's way not. better. Yeah. I mean, we were driving with my uncle. I remember we were out there when I was a kid. And there's like a 140-inch whitetail sitting on the side of the road. And he didn't even look over at it. And I'm like, dude, that's a giant 
white tail and he goes those are trash deer <laughs> like they, they're they muleys yeah. and elk that's what they want right. and he's like those are trash deer and i'm like a trash deer I'm you know like, you're I'm not in new hampshire here. anymore yeah. no i know they're all like there's like i can't remember it was a soybean field or something we we're driving by and like deer just pick like 130s 140s and 120s are just all picking their heads up i'm like and you're just drooling oh i'm just drooling <laughs> like i'm fogging the window yeah. and he's like dude those aren't mule deer stop i'm like oh jeez <laughs> whatever but yeah, so I'm sure I'll do some hunting out there. Um, Be cool just to experience something new out there. It is, yeah, and, and and I've heard people tracking deer out there, yeah. and they say it's really cool because it's completely different scenery mm -hmm. than around here. Um, so I definitely am interested, and I know some guys that are that live out there that are actually from Vermont that moved out there as well, and they've they've done hunting. So it's not I'm gonna be able to, I'm gonna go with someone anyways, whether I buy my tags. I just want the experience. Yeah, but yeah, I'm excited That'll to come back sweet. though. I'm definitely excited to come back. All that cooped up energy, I'm just going to be yeah, ripping. Yeah, you'll be running around. Oh, I'm going to be running right over them. I'm <laughs> yeah. just going to run right over them. You'll be running right by them. I'm going to be like, yeah. A, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. I'm going to be like a beagle when the when the rabbit takes a 90 and he just keeps running. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And I, and I think my lungs, I've heard that your lungs get expanded. So That's my breathing, my breathing, should, yeah, my breathing should be pretty good when yeah. I get back because I've, I've ran myself out of breath a couple times. Yeah. <laughs>